Suchitra said I'm mischaracterizing science. I don't think I made any claims about the activity of what science is all about. I was in the US last week debating with the theoretical physicist Sean Carroll, and he speaks very confidently. He says, we know from physics that there is no strong emergence. And so everything, including consciousness and free will, must be reducible. You uh, must be just weak emergence, only weak emergence. It's, it's interesting to me that it seems that both me and Suchitra are perhaps disagreeing with, she can correct me, if, perhaps disagreeing with Sean Carroll in different ways. I disagree with him because I don't think Conscious, we can make sense of consciousness being weakly emergent. So Chitra is disagreeing with him, I think, on empirical grounds. And I have actually heard, I try to talk to scientists as much as possible, that the, the physicists, it's the theoretical physicists who don't do experiments, who sit with their equations, who think, oh, everything's reducible to the basic equations of quantum mechanics. Whereas the condensed matter physicists like Chitra, uh, who actually do the experiments and study these systems, know that is false. But consciousness is not a mechanical property and not a mechanical behavioral property. When I say, my wife's in pain, I'm not making a claim about her behavior or the behavior of her inner parts. I'm making a claim about how she feels. Now, it's closely connected to behavior because when you feel pain, you sort of scream and stuff. But it's not just a claim about behavior. And so this whole paradigm of weak emergence just, just falls apart. So that's a question, if you're thinking, does physicalism make sense? Is it plausible? You've got to ask yourself, is it plausible that consciousness is just a mechanical behavioral property? Because that's what the physicalists think. Maybe I could just say very briefly the, the, the story the panpsychists tell, which comes from Russell. So Russell in the 1920s was thinking very hard about the fact that physics is purely mathematical. And what he realized follows from that is that physics isn't really telling us that much about fundamental reality. It's merely describing its mathematical structure. So as far as physics is concerned, fundamental reality could be anything as long as it has the right mathematical structure. That's all physics requires. As long as it has the right mathematical structure, you're going to get physics out of that. So the panpsychist exploits that to make sense of the emergence of physical reality. So the idea is at the fundamental level of reality, we've got these networks of very simple conscious entities interacting in simple, predictable ways, forming certain patterns, certain mathematical structures, and those mathematical structures just are what we call physics. I think science is being mischaracterized here. So uh, science is not about mathematical structures that give rise to reality. So the best theories we have can maybe, you know, talk about, like I mentioned, two electrons, we break it down, we get quarks, we break it down to something more fundamental, no one would argue that can explain any of the reality we encounter, whether it be you know, quantum phenomena I study like superconductivity, whether it be classical phenomena like um, um, waterfalls or um, you know, anything else that we um, encounter that's, uh, that's uh, around us, volcanoes, waterfalls, whatever it is, you don't start from a mathematical structure and get to that. You don't get to quantum behavior, you don't get to classical behavior. It's about empirically encountering what we do and then making a phenomenological model or assertion to try and explain what we see. And it's useful because it, can, it has some predictive power to say, OK, if I change this thing, I can build a bridge. I can make a quantum phenomena change a bit. I can use superconductivity. But is it a mathematical structure that tells us about reality? Absolutely not. That's not what science is about. And actually, the so-called laws, which science is based on, where we say, oh, science means that we have Newton's laws, we have Maxwell's laws. These dictate how the universe behaves. That's not what science does. What Newton's law is that, you know, OK, an apple fell, that's gravity. It's empirically describing what is observed. And from that, we say, these two things are connected to each other. And what is supposedly this mathematical structure that underlies it is merely a description where we're saying, we're describing what's around us. We can connect these two things. And by the connection, that's useful because it helps us connect other things. It is absolutely not building a fundamental framework to describe anything around us. We have to experimentally encounter it. Suchitra said I'm mischaracterizing science. I don't think I made any claims about the activity of what science is all about. I, I'm interested in ontology, trying to have our best guess 
at the nature of reality. And that should be scientifically informed, but I think that's a philosophical project which involves identifying, having our best guess at what is going on at the fundamental level, what is str weakly emergent from that, what is strongly emergent on that. And different scientists, different philosophers have different views. As I've said, the physicist Sean Carroll thinks everything's weakly emergent on basic quantum mechanics. Suchitra seems to have a very different, strongly emergent story. Uh, Hillary rejects the idea that there's any unique way of carving up the world. So we can't just look at the, oh, what a scientist doing? That'll tell us. You've got to have scientifically informed philosophy. And I think, you know, we very much in our generation forgotten the, the, the role of philosophy here in synthesizing science and other things we know about reality. You may have seen this last week that over a hundred scientists and philosophers jointly co-signed a letter which said that the view you're describing here is what they call pseudoscience. They s <laughs> there he is again. <laughs> he's, he's got to seem like he's impartial, That's right? Chapter. I've got to do, do both of them. So they think that your, your view posits magic, that it's unscientific because it can never be tested, and they're fed up of seeing it at events like this and in popular newspapers and magazines. This view of strongly emergent panpsychism being treated as if it might be a scientific theory or integrated information theory. Yeah, but I, well, I have, do you want to respond to this? Is it yeah, just yeah. pseudoscience? I have to correct, correct how you portrayed that. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.